some Android warns might be using WhatsApp to spread. Hey, Jonathan, I heard a new story about a malware affecting Android and possibly the WhatsApp. That's correct, David. I, um, I found this interesting, not because of what happens at the end, right? Like, I think right now we, the, the research have found that it's meant to deliver adware, which we've seen in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of apps in an Android store, I think even in the Apple store, just something that is very common. But I thought the technique of this specific um, malware was interesting. So um, we have a, a researcher, ESET, um, <laughs> uh, he, Luke, Luke uh, Stefanko, I believe, he found uh, this malware that appears to be using WhatsApp to become warmable. So the, what, what the malware itself does is that um, um, it uses the notifications within Android uh, in a feature in Android called Direct uh, Reply, or, or I believe is what it's called, to reply to any contact that contacts you. So like if you are infected and um, I send you a message, it automatically sees the notification and replies to me, the person that has, is that just is saying hello to you, with a link to then install the malware myself. Um, and what was interesting about, about this is that if, you know, it, it, if you have a contact list of 100 people, right, and let's say the only 5% get, you know, fall for it, that is, that could spread very quickly. I mean, WhatsApp is very popular, right? And, 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 and not just in the US, it's Latin America, India, right, Europe, like this is, so uh, a technique like this that is using built-in Android features to then just reply with that malware untested URL uh, could cause a lot of problems. Now, <clears throat> it's, really, it's really up to the users to really get infected with this because the, what you actually end up installing is an APK, right? So the only way for you to even get infected in the first place or to fall for it would be to technically silo it, right? To, to enable uh, the, to, to allow your phone to install unknown applications uh, from, uh, you know, external sources, right? Not the Google Play Store. Um, and the malware actually takes it a step further and actually walks you through the process of enabling certain, certain features, such as like, you know, can we look at your notifications, which is something it needs to become warmable. It also uh, walks you through even the process of how to silo the app at the beginning if your phone is not enabled for it. Um, they're, they're very polite malware uh, groups that walk you through every step of the process to try to get you to install this application. Uh, but once that's done, I believe it even uh, asks you to enable the battery, you know, to, to disable the battery saving mode so that the app is always just running in the background. Um, so, uh, you know, you probably forget about it, right? There's no interaction with the application after you install it. Um, I believe the way they're luring you is that they're telling you that you may win um, I, I, I believe so, uh, you will, will you'll win something in return for you to install in this app and go into the whole process. Uh, I do not have numbers as to how many people are actually um, have fallen for it, but I can tell you that if the link is changed and the, and the technique is just being reused, there's I don't see how it stops unless we just trust the fact that um, uh, we have you know. My anti malware, antivirus, and selling an Android phone that that might catch it. Um, and again, I think we always said in the show, you know, do not <laughs> do not install <laughs> third party APKs from a random website, right? Like just trust the Google Play Store. For the most part, I think you should still do your research. People, things get through it. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I thought the technique of using um, automatic reply to every notification was, uh, I think, New. I, I don't personally, I personally have not seen that. <laughs> so um, one of the things I thought interesting about this particular sample was they mentioned it has some additional features um, in that it can 
asks to intrude upon other apps running on the device. So it can, right. let's say you have Facebook running or something, mm -hmm. it can kind of overlay the Facebook yeah. app with its own maybe login page and capture uh, your login credentials uh, from another website. If it's really, I don't know how it would do this, but apparently it has the capability to overlay other apps um, yeah. uh, while it's running in the background. So that's an interesting feature to me. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about uh, was that, well, I mean, is this really that big of a threat? Because WhatsApp, didn't they lose like a bazillion customers recently? I know I'm just kind of being silly, <laughs> but they did, uh, they did no. just update their privacy <laughs> policy and they had a big decline in their user base. Um, but I'm sure that's temporary uh, while people are all adjusting. So. Well, I, I don't know from, the, from what I can tell, the features that are being used are not exclusive to WhatsApp. So like the automatic reply and the notification, uh, you know, uh, viewing, I think that could apply to anything. So right. um, I, including just like your regular Facebook or, you know, if you, if you did move to Signal, which you should, um, <laughs> then, uh, then yeah, I mean, there's nothing stopping you except for just being careful at this point. <laughs> You know, like you say, if it's just WhatsApp, but the problem is, you know, just getting normal users to understand that, which is right, all the problem we always have, right? Getting them right. to understand. And I don't know, you know, especially now, like John said, you know, where it basically takes over, puts, basically puts itself to the foreground and basically intrudes, if you want to call it that. It, it'd be hard to, you know, uh, again, it just goes back to user awareness and, and getting them to understand that, you know, if you don't understand that software or anything that asks you for permissions to do anything, just, you know, don't accept it. So, you know, that's the way I, you know, I kind of look at it. Granted, that's a simple uh, explanation or answer to all problems, right? But again, that is the underlying thing is just, you know, awareness of how to prevent, you know, any type of installation of app on your phone that you uh, don't expect. Yeah, I agree. I mean, right. it, it's it's very a very common pattern. I, you know, I, I, don't, I see it. Beyond just you know the the texting messaging apps, like, you know, phishing. Usually, a lot of the stuff requires you to take extra steps, right, to enable a macro, to down to in, to download a zip and install the exe that's in it, right? Like there are extra steps that people end up taking every time, and in something like this is the same thing, right? Like just because your friend sent you this link. Once you click on it, if it's asking you to install something, then it's asking you to enable unknown source installation, then it's asking you to enable notification watching, and then it's asking you to, you know, what, what John just said, to let you overlay things over other apps. I mean, at some point, you just need to be educated, right? Like you, you, there's nothing that we can do to protect you when you're just saying yes to all and allowing everything uh, that's, Less, it was there. To, it was there because it was meant to protect you, and you bypassed it. You know, like six times. You know, just again going back to what you said about, um, you know, uh, maybe having an endpoint security on the device or a mobile security. But again, that goes back to you know, again, someone mm -hmm. willing to pay for it. Not that that's a bad thing, because you know, a lot of people should or everyone should have that. But then again, understanding how to use that or or get that onto their device. So. You know, and you know, obviously updates to that particular endpoint security to recognize that. So even if you do have endpoint security on the phone, um, are the updates going to be updated to let that be recognized and, and, and stopped or uh, prevented? And to those watching us, look, if you have family members that just click yes to everything, just tell them to stay just in the Google Play Store and the iTunes Store. And just don't go outside of that. <laughs> and that's a, yeah. one one small tip that is easy to explain. Um, a lot of this stuff just requires you to take one step further and, and not, you know, Google, once they find something is bad, as far as I understand, they'll remove it remotely. They will get it off your phone. So, um, you know, that, that's a protection a third-party install doesn't have. So just be careful and educate those around you.